Deep in the heart of Texas, Jerry Jones built an empire. On any given Sunday, it's America's game. Is the business of America's team still strong? Now that the NFL season has started, it's worth remembering that football is not just the most popular sport in America, it's also a business. And that business can be incredibly lucrative. That's why tonight I am thrilled to have a chance to speak with Jerry Jones, the owner, president, and general manager of the Dallas Cowboys. Literally the most valuable franchise in football, or actually any sport for that matter. Teams valued at north of $4.2 billion. Cowboys aren't at home this weekend, but there's still a big matchup at AT&T Stadium. For only the third time ever, it'll host a boxing match, a fight between Canelo Alvarez and Liam Smith. Big box expected. Mr. Jones, welcome to Mad Money. Well, great to be on, and uh, this is an exciting time, and we're sitting here, they're building the ring, adding additional seats. We've got fighters on the card all over us here, uh, champions in the past, champions now. It's an exciting time. All right, well, let's talk about uh, the incredible value of the Dallas Cowboys as a franchise, and I just want our viewers to get from you why a, a, a town which is not the biggest town in America, I mean, the New York Giants are worth less than your team, Chicago Bears worth less than your team. How is it possible that your team continues to go up in value? Well, first of all, those values, I, you know, I would trade those values for some more first downs or some more <laughs> touchdowns. Uh, I may never, would never see that value, but uh, uh, certainly we do know that market uh, is huge. You've got a great, great uh, legacy of football in this state, in this area. And uh, uh, great grandmothers remember stories of uh, their sons or their, their fathers telling them about two a day. So that legacy here, this is football country, number one. Okay. Uh, number two, this is a tremendously economic booming area. Um, I bought the Cowboys because I just wanted to be associated with sports and football. And I didn't buy them for money. I fortunately got a little money together. I gave it all up to get to be a part of football. Uh, and so I didn't look at it financially. But had I, had I looked at the potential growth, had I known that at that time we were going to go into 15 or 20 years of one of the greatest economic expansions this country's ever known, I might have felt a little better. <laughs> have we been having this interview right. when I bought the team? All and right. I've been sitting here holding a glass of water. I would have been shaking so bad I couldn't have held the water. Oh, I got I it. Well, worried. Jerry, you, you mentioned a good, an interesting thing, which you said to be affiliated with the NFL, be affiliated mm -hmm. with the team. There's a company, Twitter, and I know you follow all sorts of business. It's not really doing that well. Do you think being affiliated with the NFL for tonight's game is going to matter to Twitter? Well, I think so. Uh, every time that uh, I've entered the world of uh, affinity or interest regarding the NFL, I've underestimated it. I didn't see just how much interest or how much affinity is there. I had a great TV executive named Dan Burke tell me in 1989, he said, I could hire everybody in Hollywood and couldn't come up with all the soap operas that go on during the season and off the season, on the field, off the field, as you can in the NFL. It's a soap opera every day that creates a lot of interest, that creates a, uh, if you will, it becomes uh, relevant. And I think that's what uh, it's about. Now, I love the game, and I love the X's and O's. Okay. But well, it's about culture. It's more than X and O's. Well, you got to help me, because I was talking to some of my buddies who, who call, look, I'm an old sports writer. You know I'm an Eagle season ticket holder. But most importantly, I play fantasy. All of our guys play fantasy. We need help from you. When we lose on Sunday, we are just at the depths of despair. How do you get over a loss? How do you recover from a loss? Well, here in Dallas, uh, that muffled sound you hear in New York is me screaming in that pillow. And by the way, I'm up on Dallas's tallest building, maybe thinking about it. So I don't get over it. All right, now. Uh, it makes about, me sick. You know, we sat here in our draft, and Zeke went very high. Do you think about, is it like that in real world? Like when you draft Zeke, is it like us getting Zeke in the fantasy world? Well, 
Uh, I'd say this. Uh, you may know as much about Zeke as I do in your fantasy world as when we draft him. And I say that tongue in cheek. But the facts are, when you're drafting, looking down in the soul, looking in the heart, looking in what makes him a potential champion. Now, that's hard to do. That's like walking in a, a graduate school, walking in a, a business school, and picking out your millionaires of the future. You can't figure out what's inside. That has to come. Well, you, you at times have been at odds with the NFL. Uh, your attitude is one of, I think, of an everyman, frankly. You, you're not a suit. You're wearing one. But I don't regard you as a suit with the NFL. You've got your own views. How have you been able to maintain that without feeling like, well, you know what, i gotta, I got to calm down. i got to be one of the owners and know more than that. Well, first of all, uh, I got in the NFL because I love, uh, I love the sport, I love football, and because uh, people like Bill Ford were the gold standard for me, just to hang with those guys. Uh, I've really, I've said this lately a lot, I was a walk-on when I got in the NFL. The NFL has lifted me to a level that I would have never gone on my own. And so it kind of gave you incentive to be more than you could be. And the NFL has, uh, has really been that. But and uh, every step of the way, I, I just really can't believe that it's been 27 years of the kind of life that uh, being involved in competition, sport. I thought I was leaving the business world. I really did. I thought I'd get cabin fever where the real heroics are, where the jobs are created, or where uh, people really go for it. I never dreamed that would be so alive and well in the NFL as well. Well, let me just ask you one last question. Tell us about the big fight Saturday night and what it means. Are you going, is that your next big thing? Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez is a Mexican hero. We have such a huge interest in our Mexican Hispanic fan base. It's huge for us, Vaqueros de Dallas. Every time we touch boxing with our stadium, we create an affinity in our fans that follow Vaqueros de Dallas. That alone is worth it. On the other hand, I'm a big boxing fan, and I really believe that one of the great places to have a match, one of the great places to fight is not just in a smaller setting, but how about in front of 60, 70,000 people with the collegiate atmosphere and have that going on. We can do it in this stadium because we drop a screen down that is 180 feet long, 70 feet tall, and when they're fighting, you can be sitting in the top of this stadium and see their baby blue eyes when they're getting it on. I love it. That's, that's the way to watch a fight. All right, Jerry, look, I want you to have good luck in the fight. Uh, I will wish you good luck against the Skins. Uh, because uh, you're, you're a good class owner and a good, good guy. I want to thank you so much for coming on Man Money. Well, if that'll cause them to be sweet to us, I'll take it. <laughs> Fair enough. That's Dallas Cowboys owner, president, and manager, Jerry Jones. I am an Eagles fan. I can't help it. I like the guy. Man Money's back here to the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.